that whole pint of chocolate hagen dazs ice cream. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to assume that my diabetes will be gone. <laughs> <laughs> Still waiting guys. We are, let's see, almost at the end of February the 19th. It's 11 o'clock at night and I am not dilated, but my contractions are more frequent, a lot stronger. So um, yeah, it's still a waiting game. Nothing's happening. Oh, but Erica's enjoying it really well. She's passed out. She's just had a hard day today. Poor thing. My mommy's chilling. And my sister is here. Okay, update for Lesbian Mom's crew. So these are contractions. They're getting closer, which means more frequent and stronger. This is the baby. So every time Dina has a contraction, the baby doesn't like it. See how her thing drops here? That's what they're a little bit concerned about. So, instead of going up on the potassium, we are going to... Potosin. Uh, uh, Potosin, excuse me. I'm very tired. Uh, we are gonna keep it at the same level and see how the baby reacts. If it continues to do that, um, then we're not gonna increase, but if she kind of mellows out, then we're gonna go up on the dosage. To try to increase her contractions, get it to dilate, and then hopefully have a baby sometime. How are you feeling, Mama? It hurts. What is it called? Pitocin? Pitocin. Pitocin. So, uh, one to ten, where you're contractions pain wise like six now for sure six mm -hmm. <clears throat> how frequent do you think they're um according to the chart they're three minutes apart 
Three minutes. How can you tell? Oh, there's a time. Oh, here comes the next dosage. What? But she said she was going to wait on it. Yeah, but she didn't increase it. With me a Yes. See. Oh. You got this, babe. It is 4.15 in the morning, and uh, we're exhausted. We want to give you a little rundown of our experience in labor and delivery. Yeah, it was an experience, all right. So, the original plan was come in, have this baby naturally, vaginally, go through the contractions, cervix will dilate, and then she's ready to come. And then we push. It didn't happen that way. They were like, well, you know, your contractions are, are you know, naturally you know, happening, so there's really no point in sending you home, but your cervix is nowhere near open. It was still closed uh, at this point. Mm -hmm. So they had to stay, and they were going to get us on this medication to get the cervix to thin out, which is called miso. So they started us on that, and then nothing happened, really. Then they placed a balloon. What is that called? Foley balloon. They place a Foley balloon up into my cervix, which hurt like hell. Oh my gosh. And they blew it up with saline. So they kind of tried to expand it, which they did. They succeeded. Um, but it only opened up about two centimeters. And then the next step was to get on Pitocin. Pitocin is a medication that gets your cervix to dilate and increases your contractions. Again, I had no anesthetic. I, I opted out. I didn't want to. I wanted to do this as natural as possible. Sav. <laughs> I'm going through all these contractions for, you know, Close to 17 hours. Um, no anesthetic. And then I went up to five. And then today, this morning was at a six. Worked my way to a seven. And now I'm at an eight. So, yes. So that's your Yeah, exactly. You don't feel what I feel? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that might not have been Nate. That wasn't Nate? Oh. No. <laughs> to her, it was apparently. Crazy. You know when I feel like the most when I go pee? Oh my god. It hurts so bad. Finally, they started to really hurt. And although the contractions were increasing and the pain level was increasing, my cervix was still not opening. So I finally said, let me get some nitrous, girl. <laughs> and I was loving that nitrous. Uh, then it started to get real and things were starting to move quickly, not in a good way. Um, every time I would get a contraction, baby's heart rate would drop pretty significant. And they were just checking on it and checking on it. And this is around in the afternoon, around two, three o'clock. And then they kind of cut me off of the Pitocin a few hours later just to prevent it from getting worse. Excuse the lighting, the darkness, and then the light and the darkness. Yeah. It's 4.15 in the morning. We're not going to turn the lights on. Yeah, sorry. So we're using the TV. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Finally, they, um, they 
took me up. A bit of a rest. They took her off the medicine, let uh-huh. the baby rest, see if her heart rate would, re- like, you know, she'd recover, get some rest. Um, so they did come in and talk to us about the situation, tell us that baby's heart rate keeps dropping and it's not during the contact contractions that it's dropping but after which is a little bit worse um and that she's not dilating um so there may be a chance that we have to do a c-section they gave us a bit of a rest and then um took her completely off the pitocin and then (laughs) she's farting they came back, um, probably, I would say, around, uh, 11.30, right? Mm-hmm. Like 11.30. And they started to get things going again. Oh, back up. They broke her water. They broke her bag to try to get her to dilate naturally. And it wasn't working. Um, took off the Pitocin, broke her water. Around 11.30, they came back, put her back on the Pitocin to try to increase the contractions, and the same thing started happening. Baby Santana, her heart rate started dropping again, um, and she just couldn't handle it. So they came in and told us that we have to do a C-section, we have to do it now. And um, she was she was gone, pretty much. Yeah. I went to the bathroom, came out, and they were already taking her in, so mm-hmm. it was it pretty was, fast. And again, we were expecting to do the, the, we signed the paperwork already, we're like, okay, C-section, fine, but they really, really, like, did that quick, like, emergency C-section, like, let's get her in there. Get her out, yeah. So, um, you know, this whole time, I'm, like, super, super faithful and praying to God. Everything's going to be all right. I wasn't freaking out. Everything's fine. He has a plan. She's coming. I wasn't worried. But for some reason, before they took me to the emergency room, I do have to add that a few hours before that, um, we decided on getting the epidural. Because, mind you, I had nothing. We got the epidural because they kind of warned us, like, if this baby doesn't come naturally, we're going to have to take him to a C-section. So I did get the epidural. I didn't want to, but, you know, because we were forewarned, we got it. So as they're wheeling me, or getting ready to wheel me out for the emergency C-section, they started giving me the anesthetic through my epidural that gets me um numb like super numb from the waist down um erica's still in the bathroom i'm like trying to call for her and like i can't even speak up like i just start feeling i don't know my body just starts feeling weird and sure enough i had a fever they strap you down on this tiny little table and it's literally like a cross like they strap your arms down and your body down um, they wouldn't let Erica in the surgery room yet until the drape was up. And most of you guys have ever seen a C-section. They put a drape over your belly. Um, and then my body just starts shaking. I don't know if I'm nervous. I don't feel nervous because, like I said, I'm very, very um, happy and faithful and grateful and sure that everything's going to be fine. And finally, they bring Erica into the surgery room. And she's sitting, next, you know, right behind me, and she's consoling me. Um, and then my body just starts to shake even more and more. And finally, they do the incision. I, they're pushing. I feel the pressure. They take her out, and as soon as they take her out, I, like, literally start convulsing. Like, I'm just, like in constant shake 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 i could not control it and i just felt like i was gonna pass out and throw up and pass out and i it was it was the worst feeling in the world like it was so bad i heard the baby cry i didn't want anything to 
to do with the baby at that time. Like, I did not, I, I hate to say this, but I just did not care because I was, I was like delusional. Like, I didn't know what the heck was wrong with me. I think started just to get like really, you can hear the doctors like talking, saying, get the blood ready, get the blood ready. And, you know, things started to move really quickly with the doctors. And then Dina just started like feeling, like she said, she started like almost convulsing. Her body was shaking so bad. I can see like she was starting to panic and that was scaring me. I was trying to like calm her down. Um, I remember her just being like, this feels awful. And I was like, and she doesn't complain very much. So for her to Uh like literally say that she doesn't think it, she feels awful. Uh Like, and you know, her face, she was pale and she was convulsing. I just started to panic because I saw her panic. And I remember turning and looking at the um, machines that were behind us that, you know, her blood pressure and all that stuff. And her blood pressure had dropped to like 70 something over like 40 something. Or Which is, it's, it's pretty low. That was freaking low. And I was just like, oh, uh-uh, uh-uh, girl, <laughs> you better stay awake. So it's kind of in her face because I was just like starting to panic myself and I didn't want to cry, but I was like fire in my throat, like my mm-hmm. eyes were getting all watery. It was like, I was freaking terrified. Mm-hmm. The baby came out and I felt like, the nurses may have thought we were like horrible parents because they <laughs> came over to me a few times and they were like come see your baby come see your baby you know come be with your baby come take pictures and whatever and I was like nope no thank you uh I'll go over there in a minute you know I was not gonna leave Dina and so I know they were like are you sure no come see your baby come yeah see your baby. they like after how good time no like I will go over there in a minute and I remember just like trying to keep her awake because her eyes kept rolling back and she was just like almost like she was passing out but Mm -hmm. probably one of the scariest moments of my life like I was literally terrified I didn't know what was happening or whatever but it turns out that um, during the c-section something got nicked trying to get baby out because she was in a weird position in there and the cord was wrapped around her I got nicked not the baby yeah, sorry, the, Dina did. So she lost a lot of blood, and that was a reason for her body's reaction. It was kind of going into shock. Um, she lost two-thirds of her blood count, which is a lot of blood. Um, she didn't have to get a transfusion, but um, it was pretty close to it. She went in with a good blood count, so that was, um, for the most part, what helped her through it. And I felt so bad for not wanting to be with Santana or go with Santana, but I mean, everyone has different views. A lot of people put their kids before their partners and themselves, but I, I, I put Dina, you know? I love baby Santana. Don't get me wrong. She's like, you guys could see me all day. She's our little world now. Yeah, I'm in love with her, but I can't leave Dina during that time. It was she, a scary moment. Was, I think it had it been reversed I would have done the same I wouldn't have wanted to leave Erica it was really scary um I was pretty out of it so there's not much I remember but I do remember most of it um and I just remember feeling just ugh, just awful I literally felt awful it was just so bad and I felt worse knowing that my, I could hear my baby and I didn't really want to see her Mm-hmm. But um, we were in surgery for a long time. It took a long time. I think a little more than expected or the normal C-section. Nothing was normal about that C-section. No, it, it wasn't. And they told us, you know, they were very, very transparent oh, you're with us about it. But we're all good. And she's here. And, and she recovered really fast. They yeah. took us to the recovery room. We brought baby Santana in. And I have to admit, 
we didn't expect this. We expected, you know, natural birth. So when we got in the recovery room and Dina was completely out of it and they were attending to her, they bring the baby in with us because she ended up doing really well. So they brought her from the ICU and I realized that I was by myself and it was a moment of like, oh, I have to do this alone. Mm -hmm. That was, I can laugh about it now because now I'm like, I got this. But in the moment, I just expected Dina to be there to help me, to show me what to do, you know, to, and she wasn't. So that was, but I did it. I asked the nurse, I was like, okay, this is my kid. I got to do it, you know? So I just asked her, like, I never changed a diaper before. Can you please show me how? And she was so sweet. She was like, yeah, absolutely. She walked me through it. Um, She taught me how to swaddle her and how to, like, kind of, I mean, I knew how to hold a baby, but, like, console her, I guess, you know? And seriously, it's, like, all the glory to God. Like, everything, Yeah. aside from, you know... Our, um, the the trauma of feel of the the feeling of how we went through it, um, you know, we're we're good, we're happy, and we're grateful, and and we're healthy, and we're healthy, all of us. So that's all that matters. I love you. I know I love you too. You did such a good job. Thanks. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And we'll be updating you more. Good little baby Cynthia. <laughs> She's finally here. Yay. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs>